Hello and welcome. You are now looking at the website Stripe.com and Stripe is a payment gateway that will allow vendors to take payments online using credit cards, Apple Pay, Google Pay, and other payment systems. It's also a billing platform so that if you have subscription customers and or customers for whom you require an invoice, you can use Stripe in order to contact them. In more complex uses, Stripe can be used in order to pay out to third parties also while being paid by others to fund certain activities. And the company is also in development working with vendors to be able to issue plastic cards with currency and credits. The company maintains compliance with all major regulations and at one time was the only major payment processor that took digital currencies such as Bitcoin. So in this course, we'll look at Stripe as a payment gateway in order to take payments for both digital and physical products that you might sell both in person and online. To do that, we'll be going inside of Stripe to look at the major systems that you'll be able to set up in order to use Stripe as your own payment gateway to take payments. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I'll see you in the first video. Welcome back. Now, Stripe has pricing for every transaction that you generate. Whether that transaction comes through your website or someone purchasing a service from you through an invoice, you will be paying Stripe a fee. And that fee is going to be 2.9% of the dollar amount plus 30 cents per successful card charge. Now, international cards are going to be slightly different. There's going to be an additional percent paid for that kind of card. If through an invoice, you're paid through ACH debit, that is going to have specific pricing with it also. Now you'll note that if you're using in-person payments with specifically Stripe Terminal, the cost will be slightly less than the typical transaction that occurs through your website. If you have a chargeback, the cost will be $15 per dispute, whether you win that dispute or not. You'll also note that when you receive a Stripe payment, that payout can take between two and three additional business days before it's deposited into your bank account. And when you begin processing live payments, the very first payment won't hit your bank account for seven to 10 days after you've generated the transaction through the Stripe gateway. So you'll want to keep that in mind when you're actually going to be adding your bank account to your Stripe gateway. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, to start your Stripe account, you'll click Start Now. And then what you'll need to do is you'll need to write in a name, your full name, password, and then you'll need to confirm to start the creation of your Stripe account. Now, if you know specifically how you're going to use Stripe, you can use either one of these wizards to get started. What you can also do is click this link which skips straight to the Stripe dashboard. What you'll first need to do is to activate your account. And once you have started your account, you'll notice that you should have an email that you've already sent. If you haven't received that email, you're going to click this button that says resend verification email. You'll then see the email in your box. You'll then want to click confirm email address. Once you do that, you'll then want to log in with the password that you created and then you'll click confirm your email. You'll then need to complete the rest of the activation process, including your business address, your business phone, your business entity, your employer identification number or tax ID number. If you use your social security number, if you are in the United States, you'll want to use that number. You'll need to write in your business website, and then you'll need to give Stripe some descriptive information about your business. As the account owner, Stripe will ask you specifics about your personal relationship with the business. And if you want to verify your identity by using your social media account, you can do that here in this area. You'll then need to add in banking details, including the routing number for your bank, as well as the account number. You can also add in two-step authentication to protect your account. And once you've completed all of this information, you can click this blue button to submit your application to Stripe in order to activate your account. If you need to come back and fill in more information, 
you can click this button that says save for later. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. To start the setup process, we're first going to go to this link that says settings. It's going to open up the business settings section. And what we're first going to do is we're going to work with these business settings. And you'll start with your account information where you'll write in your account name, your statement descriptor, which is what people will see when they get a charge from you. And then you'll want to make sure that your contact information is properly reflected. You'll then need to submit all of your taxing information, including your entity, your legal name, and then your tax identification number and update this information for your profile. You'll then update your branding. And by going to this link, what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to add in your icon and or logo, as well as to change your accent color. And once you have the design elements for your email receipts, your hosted invoices and checkout the way you want them, you can then click save. And you've now completed your business settings. Now in the next video, we will complete the payments and payout settings within the business settings section for Stripe. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, also in the business settings, you're going to find a column of settings that you'll need to take care of for payments and payouts. And the first of those settings will be your bank accounts and scheduling. And it's here that you will add in your business account. You'll need to have your routing number and your account number so that you'll be able to connect your bank account to Stripe. This will be the account that Stripe will send your payments to after the waiting period. You can set a payout schedule. So if you want to have your payments sent every day so that as they come in, Stripe will send them in a bundle. You can have them sent that way or you can have them sent every week or every month. Once you determine how you want your payments to be sent, you can then click Save. You'll then need to determine your payment methods. And what you'll basically be doing if you're going to be taking payments on your website is activating the cards level. And what you can also do is activate the bank credit transfer so the individuals will be able to use their bank account. Now there are other payment methods that you may want to add that will give you additional ways to get paid and this will depend on your customer base and how they intend to pay you. But basically once you have completed the cards and ACH credit transfer you'll then be ready to accommodate most people paying online. If you have a way of being able to use Apple Pay you'll need to use this link and then you'll be able to alter your email receipts. Basically what you'll be doing is you'll determine when Stripe will email your customers. So you can have your customer emailed when a payment is successful as well as when there is a refund and then you'll click save. You can also set up your orders. And basically you can determine whether your shipping will be free and if you're selling primarily digital products your shipping will be free. You can determine whether or not your taxes are going to be charged or included in your final payment and whether Stripe will capture the payment when an order is made for a specific item. And once again, if you are primarily selling digital products and the individual will be getting their product immediately, you can leave this on the default setting. And we've now covered the payments and payouts. And in the next video, we will cover the team and security elements of the business settings. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at the team and security elements of the business settings. Now, you can add team members to your account so that they'll be able to do certain things that you designate without you having to give them your login and password. So you'll click this link that says team members. You'll then click this button that says add new user. So for example, if you just want someone to see your account, maybe you have a partner, you can do that. If you want to have a support specialist, if you want to have someone who is analyzing your content, if you want to have someone who is going to be working on your platform, or if you want someone to be equal to you in terms of what they're able to do with the account, you can do that. 
Now, in most cases, what you'll be doing is adding a support specialist. What you're going to do is put that person's email address here in this area and then click the invite button. Once that person confirms, they'll then be added to your account. Now, you'll also be able then to see when other individuals are logging in and when your account was accessed. And if you have any connected applications to your Stripe account, you'll be able to see it in this final section. So now that we've looked at the business settings, so we've now completed the team and security elements of the business settings. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, this video, we are going to work with Stripe Checkout. In order to do that, we're going to come inside of our settings, and then you'll see it within the Stripe apps. You'll then click Checkout Settings. Once you click Checkout Settings, if you have not enabled Checkout, what you'll need to do is to click this button that says Enable Checkout. And what you'll do first is you'll put your domain in where you're going to be using Stripe Checkout. Once you do that, you'll then click Save. Now, in order to use Checkout, the website that you are going to be using will need to be secured with an SSL license. Now, if you're currently using a virtual server, you can add in an SSL certificate to your site. In order to do that, you're going to go into your server control panel and you're going to type in Manage Auto SSL. And when you start typing Manage Auto SSL into the search, you're going to see this link come available. You're going to click that link. Now, it's possible that your host will give you a choice between a number of auto SSL providers. What you're going to do is you're going to select that choice. You can then click this create a new registration with the provider. What you're then going to do is you're going to click manage users in this tab. You're then going to choose the domain that you're going to enable. You'll click enable. And then once you've done that, you'll then click Enable Auto SSL. Then you'll select by checking the box, and then you'll head to the very top of the screen. Once you have your site selected, you'll then click Enable Auto SSL. Once you've done that, you can then click Check. Now it will typically take time before you'll see your certificate available as HTTPS. And once it's ready, you can then begin working with Stripe Checkout. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Once you've enabled your site for SSL, what you can do is you can use a plugin with your WordPress website in order to use the Skype checkout gateway. And so you can start the process by using a plugin called Stripe Simple Pay. And you'll notice that there are a number of plugins available for you to use Stripe with your WordPress website you can actually choose the one that you feel is best for what you are trying to do. Now, for purposes of this video, we're going to install Stripe Simple Pay. Once we do that, we're then going to activate. You will then see Simple Pay Lite on your dashboard. You can click that link. What we're going to need to do first is to enter our Stripe API keys. So we're going to click this link that says enter them here. Once we get to this page, we're then going to click Retrieve your Stripe API test and live keys. Once you've entered the appropriate keys from your dashboard, you're then going to click Save Changes. Once you've done that, you're then going to click into your, once you've done that, you're then going to add a new payment form, and then you're going to add in your details, and then you're going to click Create. You'll then want to use your short code, copy it, and then head back to your WordPress installation. You'll then add in your pay button to your WordPress short code. Once you do that, you can then preview your page, and then you'll see your test pay button. When you're ready then to make your payment live, you'll then disable your test mode, and your pay button will be live on your WordPress website. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, inside of the settings area in Stripe, you also have default billing settings. So if you click the settings link, and then you come to the middle where the Stripe apps reside, 
what you're going to do is you're going to click this link that says Billing Settings. Now Stripe does have a number of things that you're going to see by default. You're going to have automatic retries when for some reason a subscription has failed. And of course, if you have a way that you want to do it specifically, you can actually change those rules to custom by clicking this button. Now, once you've invoiced someone and you have a certain number of days, you can set the invoice so that the individual will get reminders from Stripe. The one thing that you do have control over is the system of emails that Stripe will send on your behalf for renewal reminders, failed payments, and expiring cards. What you can also do is if you have an online account set up where individuals can change their information, you can add that information inside of Stripe. And when you invoice individuals manually, you can change some of the text inside of the email that goes out by writing in to these dialog boxes. And we will cover invoices in a separate video. You can change the default settings for manual payments. So routinely, if you're going to be invoicing an individual and you want them to pay right away, you can change this default setting from 30 days to one day. And generally, whatever payment methods that you set up for Stripe, those are going to be the default payment methods that individuals can use in order to pay you. In this case, we have ACH and credit cards. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now within the business settings, you're going to notice that within the Stripe apps, there is a radar setting. And when you first open your account, you may be testing Stripe for radar. Basically, it is an engine that blocks payments with a high risk score where their algorithm detects something that looks like it may be a fraudulent payment up front. Basically, what radar does is it gives you the ability to set rules to block certain payments that look suspicious. And to do this, you will pay an additional two cents per transaction for this service. And so basically, this additional service will give you a block list, the custom rules that we just talked about, as well as insights on the kind of payments that you take in on a regular basis. And in fact, you'll see that as payments do come into your account, that Stripe will do a risk evaluation and they'll let you know what that risk evaluation is as you see them. So if you want the additional protection of your already existing account, you can try Stripe Radar for free for a certain period of time. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now on your left side menu, you're going to see this area that says Payments and Disputes. When you click inside of that area, you're going to come into a space where you can see all of the payments that come to your account. And you'll be able to see all of the details for that payment in addition to any fees that you've paid to Stripe or any third party. And you can go inside that detail by clicking on the payment itself. And once you do that, you'll be able to see the elements of the payment, the risk evaluation, as well as any fees inside of the payment detail. You'll also be able to note the payment method that the individual used in order to pay you. If for some reason you need to refund the payment, what you'll do is to come to this right side menu, you'll click these three dots, and then you'll click this link that says refund payment. The Stripe will notify you if for some reason you have a dispute with a customer. When that happens, you're going to be able to come into the dispute area to answer the dispute and work with the individual so that you can complete the transaction. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, if you go into your left side menu and you click on the balance button, you're going to be taken to the menu with your balances, your payouts, and transactions. Now, the first screen that you're going to see will be the balance dashboard. What you're going to see in total are going to be the Stripe payments that are going to be sent to your bank, those that will be sent to your bank in the future, likely within the next two days. You'll see a breakdown of those payments. You'll see the payments that are already on their way to your bank, again in total. You'll also see the payments that are going to be sent to your bank in the future, and you'll see the day that they're expected to arrive. 
Also within the balance dashboard, you're going to see an area for payouts. And in this section, you'll see the amount of the payouts that are going to be in transit to your bank, as well as those that have already cleared your bank account and should be present when you're looking at this paid indicator. Third, you'll see a transactions dashboard. And this dashboard will have charges, which are going to be the payments that are made to you, payouts, which are going to be those payments made to your bank, as well as payments. And each of these elements are going to be clickable to more detail about the individual charges, payouts, and payments. Basically, you'll see them in order as they occur inside of your Stripe account. Finally, you're going to see in this column that you'll see all of the fees that are going to be paid both to Stripe as well as to any third-party providers. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another. Welcome back. Also on your left side menu, you have a customer dashboard. If you open up the customer dashboard, what you can do here is you can create a customer that you're going to be billing on a regular basis or you're going to be sending an invoice to. So for example, if you know you're going to have a customer that will be purchasing something from you, either a product or service, what you can do here is you can click create your first customer. You're going to put in their email address and you're going to give a brief description. Once you have that information then, you're then going to click create customer. This customer will then be part of your Stripe dashboard. You can click inside of this customer area and you're going to have additional detail. If the customer keeps a balance, you can adjust that balance here in this area. If the customer is going to be subscribed, you can add in their subscription here in this area. But in order to create that invoice, you come inside of your customer area and click this button in order to create the invoice. Where your customer has ordered a product or service, you can create that order here in this area. And if you're going to offer this individual customer a discount, you can do it here in this area by clicking Add Coupon. And you'll be able to track all of this customer's individual activity in real time here in this area for logs as well as events. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Under the customer area, you're going to see a products area available once your account is active. When you click inside of that area, you're going to come to an interface that looks like the one on your screen. And basically what you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to add products to your Stripe account that you'll be able to access either by third party tools or using the Stripe API and or interface. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to click this button that says add a new product. You're then going to determine what kind of product you're going to be adding. Is this going to be a one-time purchase or is this going to be a recurring product? In most cases, you'll be adding in a product. So we're going to write in a product name. Now, once you've saved the product name and the price, the product name will then be the stock keeping unit or SKU. You'll be able to use this product with Stripe Checkout, whether you use a third party program or you know how to use the coding to place a Stripe button on your website. You'll be able to track all of the activity with this individual product using both the log and the events area inside of the product. Now, if you want to sell this product in a different way, but you want to differentiate that product with a different SKU or stop keeping unit, you can do that. And you're going to click this add SKU and you're going to write in a different product name or a different way of tracking the sale. And once you have the additional information in, you'll then click create SKU. What you'll have is you'll have a different way of tracking the sale of the same product, but using yet a different SKU and different checkout button. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, Stripe has a mobile dashboard, which depending on which kind of mobile device you use, you'll be able to find it in your individual store. Now, in this case, we're going to use the iOS system to locate Stripe inside of the Apple Store. 
If you use an Android, you'll need to use the same process to find Stripe in your Android store. We're going to type in Stripe in the search bar. And you should see the app inside of your store. What you're then going to do is you're going to click the download button. Once you do that, you'll then click open. You'll then need to sign in with your Stripe account. Once you do that, you're then going to sign in. And you will then have access to your Stripe account using the mobile device. You're noticing that there's a message that says activate your account. Now for the purposes of this video, we are not activating our account using a fictitious business. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now once you have a customer inside of your Stripe account, you can send an invoice to that customer so that you can be paid. So for example, we can go into the customer that we have in our customer dashboard. We're going to click inside of that customer. Then what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down. We're then going to click create invoice. We're then going to give the invoice a description, a quantity of what was sold, and then a unit price. We can add additional items if we want to add them to the invoice. All we need to do is to click add another item. We're then going to write in that item here as well as the description. We can choose to display a customer discount here in this area by adding in a coupon. Now it's quite possible that you do not have a coupon. If that's the case, you're going to have to create that coupon. We're going to click create. We're going to write in the name of the coupon as well as the idea as well as whether or not it's going to be a percentage or fixed amount. What we can do is we can also reduce the redemption time and put limits on the coupon. Once we have it, we can then click create. We can then come back to our invoice and we can click add a coupon. We can click on our customer discount coupon and then we have a total. We can customize the invoice by writing in a note. We can determine when the invoice is due. And what we can do is we can determine how we want to be paid. We can accept payment by credit card and or ACH or bank account. Once we do that, we can scroll down to the bottom. We can preview the invoice. And if we like the way the invoice looks, we can close it. We can then either save and close the invoice to send at a later time, or we can send the invoice right now. We brought to the dialog and then we can click send invoice. That invoice will appear in the individual's inbox and they can click this button that says pay this invoice. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now Stripe integrates with payment systems such as Warrior Plus and JVZoo so that you can use it to take payments for your product sales. And for example, in this case, we're going to look at Warrior Plus. We're going to go inside of our profile by going to my account. Once we do that, we're going to click on this link that says merchant accounts. We're then going to click on new account. We're then going to click on Stripe. Once you go through that process, you'll then have an active Stripe account inside of the affiliate platform. In this case, we're looking at Warrior Plus. Now in the case of Warrior Plus, that means then that we can withdraw our funds from our Warrior Plus wallet into our Stripe account. What it also means is that when we are selling a product, all we'll need to do is to click this button and turn Stripe on in order to take Stripe as the payment for our product sales. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now you can access your Stripe account through your shopping cart, and you're now looking at a shopping cart called Thrive Cart. And you may have a different shopping cart system, and so your process may be slightly different. We are going to go inside of our account, and then we're going to go inside of our profile so that we can connect Stripe to our shopping cart. We are now inside of our settings for Thrivecart, and we're going to find our integrations. 
Now that we've done that, we're going to click View for Payment Gateways. Now what we're going to do is we're going to click this button that says Integrate Now so that we can connect our Stripe account. When we get to this page, we're going to click Connect Your Stripe Account. Now if you're already logged into your Stripe account, you'll note at the top that Stripe will tell you that you're logged into your account. And then all you'll need to do is to click this button that says Connect My Stripe Account. Now Thrivecart will tell you or your shopping cart will tell you that you are connected to your Stripe account. In some cases, you can connect a second Stripe account if that is permitted by your shopping cart. Once you've done that, you can then access your Stripe account through your shopping cart. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now Stripe does have integrations with other cloud-based platforms and third-party systems. And you can find both applications and partners in categories on a left side menu. At the very bottom, you'll find plugin partners for WordPress, WooCommerce, and other business related systems. For example, if you're just looking at extension partners for accounting, Stripe has these available. If you're looking at platform partners, you'll look and you'll see a different set of integrations. Now, in some cases, the integration happens directly through Stripe. In other cases, you'll need to connect the two applications in other ways. So to find out if an application that you'd like to use will work with Stripe, you'll want to go to this web address as of the recording of this video. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. In conclusion, now one of the integrations that Stripe has that will allow you to track your activity is going to be your accounting software and you're going to be able to find that tracking inside of the settings area. If you scroll all the way down, you're going to see a link here that says data. And basically what Stripe will do is it will allow you to export all of your information to your QuickBooks software. And to do that, all you need to do is to click this button that says export to QuickBooks. Once you do that, all you need to do is to click this export button. Once the export process is done, you'll have a file that you can then save to your hard drive. What you can also do is to download your own monthly report. And you can do that by clicking this button that says download report. And basically what you'll be downloading will be a CSV file with your information. You'll then be able to open that file inside of Microsoft Excel or you'll be able to upload it to your Google Docs system. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I'll see you either in another video or in another course.